A while ago, I took apart a fake snap power cover plate for receptacles or sockets that basically you take off the original cover plate, you put this one on, and it's got two slide contacts at the side that slip over the electrical connections and it turns it into a night light with a light sensor in the front and three LEDs in the bottom that project light down onto the floor. This is a real snap power cover plate and I'd like to thank Leon for sending that from America. I've also got another cheapo from China, another clone, so I thought it'd be interesting to compare them. So, as a quick recap on the original circuitry, it was based on this little circuit board that sat in the bottom. I'm not sure what, this, what is underneath these yet because I've not had them open yet. We'll be doing that in a moment. But basically speaking, the main supply came in. It went through two resistors. Not sure, never worked out why. I don't know if it was one was being used a fuse and one was being in rush limiting. But then it went through this tiny capacitor as a capacitive dropper. And keep in mind that on 120 volts AC, the peak voltage across that is going to effectively be 170 volts, so it's quite high for that little tiny capacitor. But keep in mind this was a generic fakish type product, and I don't know what's in these yet. But I went through the capacitor as a capacitive dropper, uh, and then there was this strange arrangement of two sections that form a bridge rectifier, two diodes in each, to rectify it. Uh, this capacitor for smoothing it, and then this light sensor and this transistor, and the light sensor and the, this resistor form a bridge and basically speaking, it shunts the uh, current across the LEDs while it's daylight, but when it gets dark, it goes open circuit, and then the current can flow through LEDs and make them light. So that is what we're working on so far. Let's open up the real thing. I'm kind of intrigued to see what's in here. So differences. This was quite a complex plastic moulding here. The other ones, uh, the other one had a copperish type contacts and this same uh, double plate arrangement. But this one is much more complex, the real thing. It's kind of designed to... I see a copper trace here and then the contacts, but um, it's designed, clearly designed to deflect stuff out the way as it squeezes its way in. Let's open it up. So off comes one plastic rivet, two plastic rivets. Quite tight here. Three plastic rivets. I really could just prize this, couldn't I? Would that work? Hold on, I'm going to get a screwdriver and just give it a prize and see what happens. No, it's quite well stuck together. I'm going to have to snip these plastic rivets out as much as I can before I uh, start prizing. Oh, it's got a little, uh, it's got a little waxy card, oh, a bit of cardboard over there for the contact protection. Uh, yeah, snipping these rivets off is not so easy because they're behind those uh, contacts. But here are the last two, and then after this it's just going to be sheer brute force. So let's see how I get on. Oh, here we go. Ah, so it is just a little circuit board down there. Let's get these contacts off, if we can get these contacts off. They're kind of heat staked on as well. And here is the circuit board. <laughs> the circuit board has similarities already. It does have similarities. Um, let's get close in in this. It's a black circuit board. That's not terribly helpful. Let's brighten this up. I can see this is marked B. I think that is a fuse. It's a surface mount fuse. There's an inrush limiting resistor. There is the dropper capacitor, much bigger dropper capacitor, that's better, with a discharge resistor across it, well-rated discharge resistor. Um, and then I think it's more or less the same arrangement. I see the light sensor, I see a transistor, I see a resistor, I see the smoothing capacitor, and then the little bridge rectifier made from two sections, which in this instance are called D1 and D2. It's pretty much the same circuit, but with better rated components, much better rated components. And then the three LEDs along the front, which are side emitting LEDs that you'd normally find used in LCD displays. OK, so that's that one. Uh, let's uh, open the clone and see what this particular clone looks like. This one looks like it's going to come across part much easier. Yes, it is. I had a feeling that was going to be the case. Okay, this one is kind of a, they're all, all the clones are different. Uh, let's zoom down in this one. So, zooming down, 
we've got the supply coming in. It's going through what I'm guessing they're using as a fuse. What does that actually say in it? It's a, it's a very low value resistor being used as a fuse. We've got the 270. That is better than that one. Uh, how does it compare to the original? Oh, they're, they're actually basing this one very closely to the original with a slight component shuffling. Uh, tell you what, you know what, this is, what's better here, I'm going to take a picture and then we can take a much closer look at this. So here's a closer look and it's very clear the original snap power unit is much better quality in terms of just component selection and the others are clones and they have some weird oddities. They all have the same basic circuit, they've both got, well, they've both got kind of a fuse. The snap power has a real fuse, it's a bit marked B. This uh, clone has a 0.01 ohm resistor. Then they've got the 270 ohm resistor to limit the inrush current. And then rather oddly, the uh, snap power has a really generously sized capacitor, which instills a bit more confidence with a 470k resistor across it. The clone has a much smaller capacitor with a 47k resistor, and that, that's going to pass about 2 milliamps. Uh, it's going to dissipate over a quarter of water power in the mains. Uh, I'm not sure why they chose that resistor. It's a very odd thing to do. Uh, this clone uses an even tinier capacitor. Absolutely no confidence in that one at all. That was a previous one. Uh, but it also uses the 470k resistor, although this one is rated probably for the higher voltage. I'm guessing. Um, the All the circuits use the same arrangement of the pairs of diodes to create the bridge rectifier. The smoothing capacitor, quite a small one, but a modestly high value, I think. It's very hard to say because I can't measure them in the circuit because the loads across them. And then they all use MOSFETs. Now, I've got the schematic here, which I'm going to show you. So let's bring this in. So the supply comes in, goes through the fuse, that's these two items here, through that 270 ohm resistor, that's these two items here, and then this uh, parallel arrangement of a resistor, discharge resistor, and a capacitor. Uh, that's uh, these two, these two respectively. Um, then it goes through the bridge rectifier, which is made in this case of this A7 pair of diodes, and this A7 pair of diodes, and this KAE diode pack and KAE. So that's uh, two pairs of diodes forming the bridge. Then a capacitor for smoothing, which is this here, the MOSFET, and they've used MOSFETs in both instances, but uh, the original uses a, a MOSFET marked K38, and the clone uses a J1. This other one, the original clone I took apart, was marked SA. It was one of the hardest to find. But they are MOSFETs, no, most notable for their very low on-state uh, voltage, uh, should I say on-state voltage. The uh, gate voltage threshold is low at 1.5 approximately, which is needed here because uh, it's a quite a low voltage cross here. Uh, then it's got the light sensor. The two clones use a very similar light sensor. That one calls it an LED. It's not. I checked that. It definitely wasn't an LED, although you can use LEDs as light sensors in some applications. They're, they put out a typical their forward voltage, but extremely low current microamps, not terribly useful. And uh, They've got the light sensor, and then they've got a resistor. The resistor, in the case of the original, is 1204, 120k. Oh, that's not 120k, that's 1.2 meg ohm, isn't it? 120 and uh, four zeros. And this one uh, is marked for 30k here, but they've actually used 914, which is 910k, best part of one meg ohm. And then the LEDs are in series. And what actually happens here is it forms a standard capacitive drop arrangement that on each half of the waveform, a small portion of current is shuffled backwards and forwards through this capacitor. And uh, that uh, is smoothed to degree, degree by this capacitor here. And if it's dark, then the, there's no light shining in that. So the MOSFET is turned off and the current flows through the LEDs, making them light at night. However, if it's daylight, if there's a modest amount of level of light hitting that, it pulls the gate of the MOSFET high and it turns it on. And uh, when it turns on, it basically shunts the voltage rail down until it sort of reaches an equilibrium, but it's going to be below the forward voltage of the LEDs. 
It's the simplest way to control them. It, it seems inefficient. It's basically shorting out the LEDs. But in this type of circuitry and the current involved, it's not really significant. It's just it's a way of saving LED lifespan. Um, so, quite interesting. As I say, the original snap power is the one they've not skimped in components. They've used much larger size. I'm not sure what the... I think this one is rated about 100 nanofarad. It's very hard to tell because it does have a resistor in parallel and that screws up testing with capacitive te capacitor tester. Um, but uh, I would say that that capacitor is just too small. This one's a bit squirmy. This one is actually inspiring more confidence. It looks like they've actually based it for operation of the mains and they've got the fuse here. So by far the snap power one is the highest quality. The other ones will probably work, but there's no guarantee of safety. So uh, interesting, very interesting. So I'd like to uh, thank Leon for actually sending the original because it was very interesting, well worth taking apart.